In this video, I want to talk with you about the potential of hydrogen, otherwise known as pH. Now, I started making this video and I realized it's a ton of information, so I actually put it all together in a guide that's free to you and available either here or at humblegrowthhydroponics.com. I put a link in the description box. Just make sure you get that guide. I'm gonna be using it to run through this entire video because there is a lot to cover when it comes to pH. Let's get right into it. So the potential of hydrogen, what does that even mean? Well, pH is measured on a scale from zero to 14. Zero being very acidic or containing a lot of hydrogen. 14 being very alkaline or containing hydroxyls and not much hydrogen at all. So basically what a pH measuring tool is gonna do is tell you how much hydrogen's in the water and that's gonna determine whether it's acidic or whether it's basic. So in other words, a pH meter basically just tells you if your water is acidic or not. Moving past the definition and the terminology, let's talk about the most important thing about your pH, the nutrient availability. See, pH actually is responsible for unlocking individual nutrients for your plant. So if your plant falls outside of the range here that you can see that these available nutrients uh, can be taken in from your plant, then they can't be absorbed anymore. This is called nutrient lockout. And it's when the nutrients are available in the water, but the plant just can't take them in because the pH is not right. If it falls too far off to one side or the other, then you can have severe nutrient lockout. And this can cause the entire array of nutrient deficiencies as you are literally going to be experiencing each one of those nutrient deficiencies because the plant has cut off access to each one of those nutrients one by one because it cannot absorb them due to the pH not being correct. This is why some plants like blueberries prefer a very acidic pH because they actually need these particular nutrients more than they would need the nutrients of plants that would prefer something like uh, a pH of 6.0 or um, even more basic like a 7.0. So it's really important for you to know what your plant's preferred pH is and then to make sure that you're meeting those needs throughout the entire growth cycle. Two things to note on that, when you search for your plant's preferred pH, make, make sure you're searching in a hydroponic garden. Uh, this is going to make a huge difference because soil acts as a bit of a pH buffer and so plants prefer around 7.0 with soil, a little more basic. Plants in a hydroponic garden, in a hydroponic environment with direct nutrient access, actually Actually prefer a more acidic pH. It kind of unlocks more nutrient access and it's a bit of a sweet spot uh, to avoid the nutrient lockout. So let's say you have a plant and the pH goes all over the place. It starts spiking on one side or the other for a long period of time and you start seeing all of these different nutrient deficiencies and you have no idea what's going on. Well, this is why I always tell people to check their pH first and foremost. That should be the first thing you do when you walk into your garden, especially if you notice something happening. Before you start to question if there's a nutrient deficiency or anything is going on, the first thing you need to do is check your pH because if that's off, you can easily solve the problem before it becomes a major problem. Even just checking your pH every time you're in your garden to make sure that it's set where it needs to be is a great practice that you can do to ensure that problems don't happen. It's a great preventative measure. The other thing with making sure you, that your pH is set is whatever you set your pH to when you first start, like 6.0, that's what it should be set to during vegetation, during flowering, all the way through harvest. It needs to maintain that same pH. Plants really don't like change. They grow accustomed to the nutrients that they can uptake. And if that changes on them, then they will show signs and uh, you won't really know what's going on because you might not be completely aware of what's happening. Um, but like I said, usually 90% of the times when people see things that are happening that, that resemble nutrient deficiencies, it's actually problems with their pH. So next I wanna talk about EC and pH. In other words, how your nutrients are gonna affect your pH. Well, nutrients by nature are going to have a lot more uh, hydrogen. So they're gonna make your, your nutrient solution a lot more acidic, it's gonna go down. Uh, so what you need to do is be aware of this and don't bother changing or don't bother adjusting your pH until after you've mixed all of your nutrients, you have everything set and ready to go. And then as a final measure, check the pH and adjust accordingly using pH up or down. We'll get into that here in just a second. 
It is important to be aware as your plants grow and mature, you will require more nutrients. They'll need a higher EC. And because of that, the pH will constantly be shifting towards more acidic. So you'll need to be balancing that to make sure you're bringing it back up to where it needs to be. Uh, this is something that you run into as plants go into flowering. Other things like respiration and uh, root decay and decomposition within your water, those are also gonna make your nutrient water become more acidic. So you'll probably have to use more pH up than you're even comfortable with but you're doing just fine as long as you're making the adjustments to keep your pH where it's supposed to be that takes me to the next thing how to measure and adjust your pH well, I stopped using analog pH adjustment tools a long time ago because I just started reading my pH so frequently that it just kind of felt like I would be buying them all the time it felt like such a waste it was a huge mess I went to digital pH meters about three years ago and I haven't looked back uh, they're so much easier once you learn how to calibrate it it's really really quite easy to calibrate once a week to make sure that nothing's going wrong and with the amount of calibrations or I'm sorry with the amount of readings that I'm doing it just makes sense to get a digital pH meter. Now to use these, you just turn it on and put the tip in the water, wait about two or three minutes and it'll tell you the pH right there. And then we'll just use pH up or down in very small amounts. Use a very small amount. So we're going to measure, use a small amount to adjust, measure again and wait. And then use another small amount to adjust if you need to. But I see a lot of people using too much pH up or too much pH down. They throw a bunch and they throw a bunch and then finally they get to this point. It's like, let's just do small small increments to get to the to, to get to our desired pH. Less is more with pH up and down, I can definitely tell you that. So to recap, pH is your potential for hydrogen. Uh, it's gonna measure the amount of hydrogen or how acidic your water is. That's really critical because certain nutrients are only available to your plants at certain pH levels, so you need to know what preferred pH level your plant likes and then make sure you're adjusting accordingly to allow the nutrients to be unlocked to your plants. If your pH goes off too far on one side or the other, it will go into nutrient lockout and it'll start showing all sorts of deficiencies that correlate with the nutrients that it can't absorb. You'll have to figure that all out. That's why you should always start with checking your pH first. When you add your nutrients and when you mix your final solution, when you top off your garden, that's the only time you should check your pH last because your nutrients are gonna be far more acidic and they're gonna take your, your garden's pH down. So I hope that this was useful. I hope this is very valuable information. Please let me know down in the comments. Make sure you download that guide. That will be really helpful for you. And until next time, let's grow together.